All right, welcome back. Now we're going to be talking about normal approximations. So the idea here is well, we may run into some tricky situations where using what we know about our normal distribution can help us out. Okay, so let's think about some of the discrete distributions that we already know. Right, and the, the really important ones to us are the Poisson and the binomial. All right, so we're, we're really going to focus on the binomial, but we'll talk briefly at the end about how we can apply some of these ideas to the Poisson. All right, but remember for now, remember what the binomial is. All right, it's a random variable that counts the number of successes in a fixed number of trials in. Right, each of these trials should be independent, and we should be able to say each trial has a probability of success, P. All right, so what we're thinking about here, how we apply the normal approximation of this, and maybe you've ran into a problem when you're working through some binomial questions or examples, things like that. If you ever run into a binomial problem with just huge numbers that you didn't really know how to handle. Okay, so let's look at an example here of where we might want to apply this. We're not going to go all the way through with the application here, but let's, let's think about where we might want to apply this. Okay, so we're, um, we're sending bits on a communication channel here. Right? We're saying it can, they can either be transmitted in error or not. Right? So we should be able to use the binomial here and say the probability that the transmitted in error, very, very low, right? low enough, we'll probably use scientific notation for that from here on out, and say we're transmitting 16 million bits. All right, so 16 million is our n, very, very large n. 0.001 is our p, very, very small p. We want to know what's the probability that a cumulative probability here, 150 or fewer errors occur. All right, so we know we could theoretically solve this using the binomial. Right, so here's, here's what this would look like. So plugging into our binomial formula, Right, for the probability of x less than or equal to 150, right, we'd have 16 million choose 150, right, fill everything in for 150, do the math, plus 16 million choose 149, 148, 147, right, all the way down to zero. Okay, so, so theoretically it could be done using the binomial, right, but but I don't think we're going to want to do that. It's going to take us forever. So what can we do instead? Well, we'll see that we actually can approximate this with the normal distribution, right? when our numbers get really, really big. And as I mentioned, we're going to think about this with the binomial. We'll look a little more at the Poisson later. So let's kind of visualize our normal distribution in Minitab. All right, we're going to or sorry, let's visualize our binomial distribution in Minitab. Right, and let's, let's kind of remember how that behaves. All right, so here if I go to graph, probability distribution plot, view single, by default it'll be on normal, but we want to look at the behavior of our binomial here. Okay, so let's just take a binomial, say 10 trials, right, and probability let's say 0.5, right? like 10 coin tosses or something like that. Now let's graph this and see what it looks like. Okay, so here's our binomial graph. So if we picture overlaying a normal curve over this graph, I think it would look pretty good. Right? I think we would feel safe to say that we could approximate this binomial distribution with a normal. All right, so that I think that makes some sense, but let's let's change things here a little bit. Let's graph a new binomial distribution. All right, let's keep in at ten, but let's shift our probability, our p, to say 0.1. All right, let's see what that looks like. Well, this definitely looks a lot different. It doesn't look normal. Make it a little bigger. It doesn't look normal. It looks pretty right skewed. All right. So why is that? Well, let's let's try this one more time. Let's go to probability distribution plot, binomial, 
Let's keep n equal to 10. Let's put this at a higher probability. Remember, p could be anything from 0 to 1. So let's put it at, say, 0 0.8. Let's see what happens there. All right, well, 0.8 with n equal to 10, we see some left skewness. All right, so what we're seeing, we're keeping n constant, but with p right, equal to 0.5, it makes sense. Our distribution looks symmetric. When p is 0.1, or on the lower end of the scale that p could be, we're seeing some right skewness. When p is a little bit higher on the upper end of the scale, we're seeing left skewness. All right, let's make another graph. So there we were changing p, but we were keeping n constant. Let's make another graph. And let's say, OK, binomial, let's keep this at 0.8. But let's bump up our trials to 100. Now we see even with a p of 0.8, when we have a large n, this begins to look pretty symmetric and I think it would be safe to say pretty normal. All right, so let's kind of sum up and think about what we were saying there. So if n is big and p is reasonable, right, n doesn't even have to be big if p is 0.5, somewhere there in the middle. But if n is big and p is reasonable, it looks like the normal is going to be a pretty good approximation of the binomial. All right, so how can we do this? Well, remember what our mean and standard deviation look like for the binomial distribution. Right? Your mean is n times p, your variance npq, your standard deviation the square root of that. All right, so we should be able to say that the normal distribution that can model the binomial, right? remember your normal is defined by its mean and standard deviation. So if x is binomial, we should be able to approximate it with the normal centered at binomial mean n times p with the standard deviation square root npq. Generally, in order for this to work, we need, so we know it doesn't only depend on n, it doesn't only depend on p, we need n and p to be reasonable values such that n times p is greater than 5 and n times 1 minus p is greater than 5. If we meet the criteria, we should be able, should be able to do this if we meet our criteria. And just a little side note here, now I'm using 5 here as our criteria, but some textbooks, or depending on the resource that you're using, some might say 10. 10 is fine, 5 is fine, just as long as we're checking some sort of assumptions. All right. Thanks for tuning in today, and we'll see you next time.